those of you who are here in person. So nice to see everyone. And thank you to everyone who's joining online. Um, this is our fall town hall. I'm really excited to share with you lots of things that have happened over the past few months, over the summer, um, some exciting things we have coming up in the next month or so, and to leave a little bit of time at the end for questions. I think you all know that this week is inauguration week, so we are celebrating the inauguration of our president, Sunil Kumar, and that means there's lots of activities going on, including an academic symposium that two of our faculty members, uh, Patrick Webb and Sarah Fulta, are participating in. And that starts at one o'clock across the street um, in the medical school building, which means at five of, I need to run out so I can be over there and sit with the rest of the deans and support our faculty members and, and celebrate all the wonderful academic achievements that are happening in the area of One Health. So I will stop. It doesn't mean I won't answer your questions. If you have them, you know you can email me. If there's some in the chat I don't get to, Lisa will make sure that I have them and will get answers to you. So what I wanted to do today was share the new faculty hires with you, um, some notable events that have happened. I wanna showcase a little bit of our research and talent. There's a lot going on. This is not exhaustive, but it's just a few things that I thought would be of interest. Share with you how often we're in the news um, and really encourage you, faculty, students, staff, if there are interesting things going on that you're involved in, please send them to Annie Duvain and her team because she will share them with Central University Communications and Marketing. And there are lots of opportunities to write really great stories about the work that's going on here. So I wanna show you how often we're in the news and encourage you to share what you're doing. Um, really talk about a new um, joint venture between the Nutrition Innovation Initiative and Nestle give you an update on how Career Services is doing, and then a few school updates at the end. So I hope that you're all receiving the monthly newsletter that I'm sending out. How many people are receiving it? Great, the entire school should be. So if you're not, please let us know. There'll be a message from me at the beginning, and then lots of good information about what's coming up in the month ahead. And then we'll highlight a particular aspect of the school each month. And so we have announced our new faculty. A couple of them are here in the audience, but I really wanna give a big welcome to our five new, um, when I say unmodified, that means they are tenure track faculty in the Friedman School. And when you hire tenure track faculty, you never know, they could stay there for the rest of their career. So we're welcoming you. I see a few of you here and um, hope that so far your uh, welcome to the school has been terrific. And we just wanna, I'll give you a round of applause. And I'll tell you why, because it's a big deal to go through a faculty search. These were extremely competitive. They were international searches. And we're just really excited to have the five of you on board to work with all of us, to contribute to our student success, our research, our impact in the world. And I hope that if you haven't met our new faculty, you will have a chance to do that. You see their photos. So please stop them and if you see them and introduce yourself. We also have some new appointments and these weren't national or international searches. These were people who are transitioning from one role to another or joining us as faculty because they are scientists in the HNRCA. So we have three additional people who you might recognize from seeing them around. Um, they teach. Jimmy is actually running our entrepreneurship concentration, which I know some of you are participating in. Uh, Michael is um, in our BMN program and at the HNRCA. And Lou is working in food as medicine with Dari and was a postdoc who's transitioning to a research assistant professor. So this is really great news. We are about to post two new positions. One of them is for a professorship in nutrition equity. And I wanna pause and just say, we're doing a lot of work in nutrition equity right now. We have lots of faculty, staff and students working in the space across the university. And we're really excited to build this portfolio up even more. I'm chairing a working committee through the USDA and Texas A&M on nutrition equity and food environments, big project that will come out with some important publication. And I think all of us here will be contributing in different ways to the nutrition equity piece. So the second one is going to be in climate and equity. And we have an effort across the university 
to recruit more faculty who specialize in climate, and this will be a cohort hire. We'll be bringing in a few faculty from different schools across the university working in climate and equity. So our faculty may be in food systems, for example. Someone in arts and sciences may be in literature, and they be, maybe they're in journalism, and they're actually writing about what's going on with climate. So we're really excited about that. Two new faculty positions, they'll be posted soon, and we hope you'll help us disseminate those position descriptions and help us bring even more amazing faculty to the school. We've also made 20 staff and postdoc hires since last November. So that's a lot of other new people who are around the school and there are more positions that are open and we're about to also put out there on the market. So keep your eyes open. Annie always puts them on LinkedIn and on Instagram so you can spread these across your social networks. And Courtney can, answer any questions about the open positions and how they work within HR. So welcome to all the new staff and postdocs who have joined us as well. So just a quick recap, and especially for the new students, commencement was terrific this year. We were back in person. It ran exactly like it did in the past. Uh, it was a beautiful day. We had the outside ceremony with the entire university on the quad, and then we had our own ceremony. And a couple of notable things, our keynote, our, uh, our commencement address was given by the CEO of City Fresh Foods, Sheldon Lloyd. And City Fresh Foods is a really remarkable organization located very close to us that actually uh, uh, prepares and distributes meals uh, across the Boston area to uh, people with disadvantage, some preschools, some elderly feeding programs. And it's an employee owned company with almost exclusively black and brown local employees. So many of them actually work walk to work right here down um, near the Boston Medical Center. So it's a really innovative business where he's hiring locally, he's hiring people who are part of the community, who understand people who are actually getting food. And he gave a really excellent commencement address about impact and how you can use this degree to have impact in the world. And then again, for the new students, uh, I can't believe I'm gonna get emotional again, but, ah. Sorry, didn't expect this at all. I'm really sorry, but it just shows that um, we're all human, right? So last year we lost a doctoral student during the year and uh, it was really tough for all of us. She was um, an undergrad at Tufts, left for a while, did amazing work, particularly in Haiti and other international areas and came back for her doctorate and um, passed away last year. So I was able to um, give her husband her degree and that's the photo that you see there. So the trustees voted, we put it forward to actually present a degree to her. She had a little bit more time left on her dissertation but she had done enough that we felt like a Tufts degree was really important. So that was amazing to be able to say a few words and have Dan Maxwell, her advisor right by my side and present that degree to him with her whole family, her parents, and her daughters in the audience. So that was pretty remarkable. So I look forward to graduation this year. And those of you who are second year students and graduating doctoral students, it's a pretty amazing event. And I will say we have great food afterwards. So tell your family that um, it's worth coming for that after where we all go out into the tent and take photos. And I'm really uh, excited to celebrate with all of you in the coming year. Um, back in April, we had the Food is Madison National Summit that Dari led, and we gave out the Jean Mayer Prizes to outstanding academics and community organizations, and that's when the new website for Food is Medicine launched. We had lots of people tuning in from um, all over the country, and this was really an important signal that Food is Medicine at the Friedman School is going to become big. I wanted to share that I have a NIH grant working with Tougaloo College and some other partners in Mississippi, and a few of the students are involved in this project. And we had a two-day summit here in Boston where we were really planning the grant together. And this is a really exciting partnership with Tougaloo, which is a historically black college, and there'll be students at Tougaloo actually working on the grant 
in the next uh, couple of years. So we have a new partnership. We're really excited. Those of us working on the project are going back and forth. And Julian Miller, who's my co-PI, is actually coming up to speak at the Food is Medicine Institute launch in a couple of weeks. So I'm happy to introduce him to any of you if you're interested. He's an amazing partner in this endeavor. We also had a food tank event here, and I know some of you have probably been following food tank for a long time. They do events all over the country and they're very professionally run. We had it right here, but they dressed it up so it looked very different than it does. And um, it was a, a really great event. We had a lot of co-hosts and it was really the uh, excuse me, Biden-Harris administration uh, celebration of the advancement of the strategy that just actually celebrated the one year anniversary. The White House conference was last year and some of us were down there for it. And there's been a lot of progress in a year. There continues to be more progress, but our work here in food is medicine is really contributing to the success of that strategy. This had over 3000 views on YouTube. A lot of people have been tuning in to see what's coming from the Friedman School in Food is Medicine, and it was really uh, an excellent event. A couple of our colleagues were involved in a really important event at the National Academies looking at dietary patterns to prevent and manage diet-related disease across the lifespan. This was a workshop just held in August, and uh, I've done quite a bit of work with the National Academies through the years. I'm vice chair of the Roundtable on Obesity Solutions. Anytime something happens at the academies, they film it and they put it online. For the students, it's really worth going back and looking at a lot of the key lectures that have been given, and I'm happy to direct you to those. Many of us have spoken there and have been involved, but they're excellent speakers, and they're usually just full of really up-to-date information. So I'm sure this was an excellent event, and um, one of our uh, faculty members, Fang Fang, and an alumna who received her doctorate here, Allison Brown, were part of the organizing committee, and Will Masters presented. So we usually have a pretty strong presence at the National Academies when there's a workshop that's being held on food and nutrition. Um, we get asked to speak a lot, and this was a, a really important one as we really think about dietary patterns, not just dietary intake, but it's a different way of looking at dietary intake to develop patterns and look at them longitudinally. And that has influenced the dietary guidelines. That's why they're thinking about it a lot, because as you know, historically, guidelines were a lot of nutrient-based recommendations. They've grown more to food-based, and now they're evolving more to dietary patterns. So we do a lot of analysis here and um, really contribute a lot to this in the field. And then we launched a Boston Food Tech Report. If you haven't seen this yet, it just came out and the Boston Globe covered it. Katie Stebbins, who runs our Food and Nutrition Innovation Institute, worked really hard on this for a couple of years to showcase the fact that there are over 100 um, food tech companies in the greater Boston area. In other words, we're a hub for food tech. And if you're working at all with the Institute or you came to the meeting that happened a couple of weeks ago, you know that we're connected with a lot of these places. So that circles back to the career center relationship and a lot of students are moving into positions in some of these companies. So if you're interested in food tech, take a look at the report and maybe think about it as an internship, an employment, a directed study, any opportunity that would benefit your development while you're here. And then uh, the two cost of food report just came out on September 26th. This was uh, with support from the Rockefeller Foundation. And this is really another food as medicine case study, really modeling the impact of food as medicine and what that can mean in terms of cost and cost savings over the long term. And then we are having a launch of the Institute, which is really exciting. So this will happen on October 18th, and it's going to bring together a lot of leaders in science, healthcare, food policy, community engagement, and equity to talk about trends, opportunities, and future directions in the field. So more to come on that in terms of the speakers. Um, the president and provost will be here. Myself and the dean of the medical school will speak, and it will really be a cross-university celebration of the new Institute. We've also had some faculty and students get awards recently, and I just wanted to acknowledge a few of these. They happen throughout the year. Um, these just happened over the course of um, the summer. And then we also have alumni awards. So after you graduate, hopefully you'll be involved in the Alumni Association, and there are nominations, and there's a committee, and we have a really nice alumni event. This past year, it was in April at, what was it called, the Boston 
Boston Winery, yes, which is South Boston, essentially. It was really nice. And uh, that's where we give out the alumni awards. And people come back from, you know, 20, 30 years after graduation. And again, I know you all know that they're accessible to you. They're mentors. Make sure you join the LinkedIn alumni page and you're connecting with alumni in a whole variety of ways. So congratulations to our faculty, our students, and our alumni who receive rewards. We had a lot of great research presented at the American Society of Nutrition. It was in Boston this year. So that meant a lot of us were able to go and present and meet lots of people from around the country. And Sarah Booth and I um, hosted a, a reception and we got to welcome everyone and see lots of alums who are out in the field. I had a long conversation with someone who was about two years ahead of me. We did our PhD, we were one cube apart. Um, back in 1992 and 1993. And um, he is a well-known researcher in sarcopenia and protein requirements. And it was a great conversation. It was like we picked up right where we left off. Most of you know, I trained in the HNRCA and what's now the BMN program. And I was in the, um, the sarcopenia lab at the time. So that was really fun. Lots of great people came. Amazing sessions and presentations and you know, I look forward to having everyone next year in Chicago. Did anyone else see that announcement? So it's in Chicago, and I hope we have a good group going there. And then um, for our agricultural and applied economics colleagues at the association meeting, which was overlapping this, um, there were also lots of sessions and presentations. So we always have good representation there. And if you're working in um, an area where you might train with one of our faculty, maybe you'll get to go to one of those meetings in the future. Then I just want to highlight a couple other things that our faculty have been up to. Uh, Patrick Webb, who is one of the presenters this afternoon, uh, is really focused on global work, as many of you know, and he gave a keynote speech, which was translated in all six UN languages in Italian um, back in July, where there were lots of governments tuning in. Um, he was presenting to heads of state and ministers and really exciting work that he was involved in and continues to be involved in. I've actually been involved in a lot of the School Meals Coalition work through an NIH project I've done, and I've been presenting as well on lots of webinars to people across the globe working on uh, delivering healthy, uh, equitable school meals to children everywhere. And that's been really exciting. With technology now, we can talk to people. Actually, Erin Hennessy and I had a call with uh, Abu Dhabi this morning and a whole bunch of people there who want to work on child health. So I feel like every day I'm sort of getting off and on the phone, spanning the globe. And it's really exciting that people are contacting us because they want our expertise and they want to work with us. Um, well, Masters continues to work on uh, impacting and informing food policy, and they launched a really important report, The State of Food Security and Nutrition in the World. And a lot of the methods that he's developed with colleagues here around food pricing have been implemented by the FAO Statistics Division. And so, again, our impact really reaching not just peer-reviewed journals and colleagues, but actually recommendations, reports, guidelines, and the way that organizations are doing business across the globe. So really important work. Um, Elena has been doing quite a bit thinking about AI and really encouraging all of us to submit grants and really think about AI and nutrition. This is the future. How many people are using AI in some way, shape, or form? Probably everyone in the room, because I don't think we know we are, but every time you go onto a program or log in somewhere, but some of you are probably using ChatGBT and lots of other services that are out there now. It's not only here to stay, but it will become an integral part of our life and our research and the impact work we do. So understanding it better and really diving into it and making it part of how we do business here at the university will be important. And the VP of education at the university is doing a lot of work in thinking about how to bring this to Tufts in an effective and productive way. So Elena writing about responsibility for the AI generated public health policies and approaching public health with intellectual humility, um, always creative, always innovative and out front. And I think we can look forward to more work going on in AI and public health and nutrition. 
So these slides I'm not going to spend time on, but this is really the result of Annie and her team, our internal communications team, working with university communications and marketing and making sure the important work we're doing gets out there. So this is where I'm really charging all of you with um, the responsibility we have to get our work out there. It's important to publish and impact our field overall. It's also important to get the word out there to more people. And when we publish a story in Tufts Now, which is the online ongoing publication, that gets read by, I don't know, probably hundreds of thousands of people because it goes out to alums, but also the press looks at it. So sometimes they see an article and say, huh, we want to do a bigger article with the New York Times or with the Washington Post, or wow, those researchers are working on something really cool Maybe I could collaborate with them, or I'm a funder and I've been wanting to fund something in this space. So think about it as a network, which gives us access to a much broader audience when we celebrate and publish our work in the Tufts Now publication. So there's a lot that goes on. We are one of the schools at the university that has the most attention because everybody eats, everybody's interested in food. And our work goes beyond just the dietary guidelines. As you know, it's linked to community work and cost and famine and food security and um, climate and everything because we're so interdisciplinary. So people have a really, really strong interest in what we're doing. So lots of attention, which continues. Um, and I expect that it will continue strong this month as we have a lot of events here and more publications. So through KD, we have the Food and Nutrition Innovation Institute launching a challenge uh, with Nestle Food. And this also was in collaboration with the Vice Provost for Innovation, which is a fairly new office at the university. So we're doing a lot more with innovation. And if you've been following the cellular agriculture work, that is a, a biomedical engineering project with collaboration from the Friedman School. The Innovation Office works closely with them and there's another big convening coming up in January. And I went last year and it brought all the different scientists and companies and government individuals who are all working on the cellular agriculture issue, which is a lot of people across the globe and it's happening very quickly. And we're one of the leaders in that. So they help do really innovative things that we wanna be out front with. So they were part of um, this, uh, challenge, which would result in a one-year residency for the winners. The Career Services Center is amazing. It continues to do great work. And just a little bit of a recap from last year, running 51 career education programs, which was almost double the year before. Many attendees, of course, this isn't uh, unique. It's people attending multiple things. Um, a lot of masters, but a lot of PhD students have been coming on board as well, and alumni coming back and saying, huh, I'm interested in a career change and I want to redo my resume. Can you help me with that? So think of the Career Center as a lifelong partner with you. You can come back, you can get advice, you can talk to people here. We also have a lot of uh, alumni volunteers who work with the Career Center, including an executive group who helps think through a strategy for the Career Center. And um, we connect students with organizations and companies. So don't be afraid to bring a thought and say, hey, is there a door that could be opened by a faculty member or by you? So the Career Center is really here for you. Um, we have a new marketing campaign out there and I wanted to show you because you might ride the T. Is it live, Annie? Okay. Has anyone seen it, Riding the Tea? Yay! Okay, a couple of people have seen it. We worked really hard on it. It's really tough to communicate what we do. We're an interdisciplinary school, and it's hard to put, you know, a microscope and a farm and children and older people and international, you know, it's really hard to display it with one thing. So we worked really hard on what it would be. And, you know, we hope this at least is appealing to people without them necessarily thinking that we're an ag school because we do a lot of work in agriculture and agricultural economics. But as you know, we don't do extension and we don't have, um, we're not a land grant university. So this is really try to build the awareness and help people understand we have a lot going on here, as you know, from masters to PhD to certificates. It can be flexible if you do the MSNP program. They're pretty small class sizes, as you know, and you have a lot of access to faculty. So we really want people to understand what we're trying to do here. So that's out on the T and feel free to share it with people. 
Um, last year was a great year for research. Um, we do about 20 million a year annually. That's our annual operating research budget. We brought in a lot last year. Keep in mind, that's not all for a year. That's new grants that'll be over the course of one to five years. But a lot of new grants came in and we're hearing about even more coming in this month. We did partner with a management consulting company last year. And I've told everyone about this. They were called EY Parthenon. And they came in and spent about four to five months uh, with me and senior leadership at the university to really think about a growth and sustainability strategy for the Friedman School. And the timing is, is pretty good because now that I'm the dean, I have a runway to implement that strategy working with all of you. So if you're students, you're going to be asked to weigh in a little bit. Last year, a lot of students gave input, and I want to thank you for that. Uh, faculty are working in different working groups to really think about our educational offerings and our research and our brand as we evolve that. So it's pretty exciting, and you'll hear more about it, but it's pretty common when a new leader comes in to launch a strategic plan, and the president will be doing that as well. So we're going to make sure we're aligned with the university plan, and we have our own plan. And I've shared with people as I was formulating this with others, I realized that the Friedman School was founded in 1978 which means in five years, we're gonna celebrate our 50th anniversary. So it's pretty cool, the timing is great. We have a five-year plan. We'll celebrate that at the end, hopefully with a lot of success and a 50-year celebration. So it's a young school, keep that in mind. The first year, I'm looking to be in the back or someone who, how many graduates did we have the first couple of years? Like 17. So we started really, really small and we built. and. Um, even myself, when I graduated with my PhD in 96, there were a smaller number of PhD graduates, and we all spoke at graduation and got to tell about our dissertation. There's too many now to have everyone speak, but um, the names of the dissertation and the committee members are, or the, the committee chair is always in the program, but we've grown and it's great. And we wanna continue to open our doors and reach more students. So more to come on that strategy. Um, for those of you who don't know, we're gonna consolidate into Jaharis. We have one floor over at Harrison, and we're now in a hybrid world. As you know, there are people online right now. They're not all here. So we're going to consolidate to the couple of floors here. There's an excellent plan in place. And we're working on a few other things. I say exploring renovation of the cafe. A lot of students last year did some work on the cafe just doesn't feel like a place I want to hang out. Can we do something about that? So um, Courtney King and I have been working really hard with all the space planning people on the Boston campus to figure out what we can do without spending a tremendous amount of money. So more to come, but we're listening and we're really thinking about how to make it a different space. Um, as we move everything over here, we do have some nice furniture over in Neyland, which is more comfy, I'll say. There's some couches and chairs, and so we're gonna try to bring some of that over here. Some of it is actually in my office now because I wanted to have a little bit of a different look in there, so I recycled the furniture. So we'll be thinking about ways to make that cafe feel better. And I don't wanna say more because I don't wanna disappoint if we can't do it, but we heard you and we want to try to make it a better, place where you can feel like you want to hang out in between classes or meet some people and um, spend some time there together. So we are exploring that. And um, we're going to work hard together to have a lot of touchdown space. So when people are in, there'll be calendars and you can reserve space if you want to come in for a portion of the day and you don't have your own office because you're mostly remote. We are trying to do a lot of community events. So as you heard, we have a lot going on right now. We'll have more in November and December. Um, we have a culture committee that just launched a survey and I hope that everyone received that. We want your feedback. We wanna know what you want in the culture here and we wanna make sure that we're hearing from everyone. So please take the time to fill that out. We'll get the recommendations. And then I do send a monthly Dean's update. Give me feedback. If you want more, less, what, what do you want it to look like? I'm here to really serve all of you. So I want your feedback. And we're building a leadership structure. So coming on in July um, with you know fairly short notice that I was gonna move into this role, made it a little challenging to get everything in place. Summers are hard, people are away, but we're getting there. So I'm in place as the Friedman Dean. You know that um, 
Tim Griffin is the Dean for Education and Sarah Fulta is the Dean for Faculty. We're in the finalist stages for an Executive Administrative Dean, which is kind of like a COO, CFO of a school. Every school has one. Um, Ed Kleifkin was in the role and he retired. So we're close with that. We have um, an Associate Dean for Diversity, Equity and Inclusion posting out and we'll be hiring that person as well as an education specialist to really help us think through the curriculum. Um, and then we'll be appointing a research dean. So we're, we're close. I would say in the next month, we're gonna be up to full speed on leadership. So if you have questions about that, let me know. But in the meantime, everyone is working together and nothing is falling through the cracks. We just wanna make sure we get the right leaders in place. So that's the end of my presentation. I have, we have 10 minutes and I would be more than happy to answer any questions you have or get back to you if I can't answer it on the spot. And Lisa will monitor the chat. So if you're on Zoom, feel free to put a question in the chat. And don't be shy, you can ask anything uh, or give me feedback. You don't, it doesn't have to be a question, it can be a comment. Steve, were you trying to raise your hand? No, she's just going yay in the back. She's cheering from the back. Elena, Elena, uh, I think we're gonna give you a mic so the people on Zoom can hear your question. I may be a little bit out of touch after sabbatical, which I enjoy greatly. Okay, good. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> but I just want to know, uh, what is the status with a TNDS and student council? I'm curious oh. about, like, you know, to be in contact with students more closely, just to know what's going on, to help them to think through planning and, you know, yep. provide whatever need, needed help yeah. and support. I'm really glad you brought that up. I'm going to ask the mic to go to Matt Haas to answer that question about student council. But I know that we're working really hard to rebuild. During the pandemic, it was hard. Before the pandemic, it was pretty robust. And then things shifted quite a bit. So Matt, please share what's happening. Sure. So with the Student Council, uh, in January of this year, we had our first elections since the pandemic. So part of the strategy with creating the council was that we would have elections in January and uh at the beginning of the academic year so that there would be continuity as the master students graduated. Uh, the continuity became tricky when everybody had a focus to online learning. The first election took place in January, student council met last week and they're putting together uh, a plan to have elections in the next couple of weeks. Uh, there's also some flyers that got posted yesterday uh, to help with get the word out for some of those elections. So, you know, we took an approach of really trying to be thoughtful about the rebuilding with the January elections and then leading up to what will be taking place in a couple of weeks. Uh, the students have some great ideas. And if, if you have ideas, we'll hope that you uh, join some of those sessions. I uh, have a meeting with um, uh, one of the co-chairs tomorrow to order pizza on the event. Mm -hmm. Show of hands, how many people use an app to order pizza? Anybody make a phone call anymore? Any phone calls? Oh, thank you. So that was uh, one of the things that went behind the scenes towards ordering pizza. I see May May laughing. <laughs> um, but um, stay tuned and, and more to come. Yeah. Go ahead. So I see a couple of questions here in the chat. Will the school organize events to connect full-time research staff with MS and PhD students? Love the idea. I think it's a great idea. We'd love to do more of that. Um, so we will take that into consideration. That's great. I saw a question about bike racks. Love that. Um, Courtney, right now, what do we have for bike storage? We really don't have Ooh, okay. bike storage outside Great. of the rack. I think there might be like one rack in front okay. of the building, but I'm going to hand this over to Back our to expert Matt. bike rider inner, Matt Haas. <laughs> so the bike situation is that we have uh, some racks over down by Posner Hall. So those are outdoors. Uh, so if you keep walking past Jaharis, some of the racks are located there. And we also have indoor racks that are located in the parking garage. Oh. Right. But I haven't be ventured over there, but it, that's over by um, the parking. The um, Good question. Well, 
let's yeah. let's send something out about yeah. this because yeah. I think there's I hear the interest and I I'm good with the night and I um did read the article in the Globe about the ridiculous tea delays and you know families with young children spending two hours to get to work so I read that I'm trying to keep up with everything going on in Boston and I experienced it myself because I took the tea which I haven't done in a while. And I was pretty bummed out. Like it took me a long time. So Elena, I think, made a comment um, in the chat about that. Thank you. So we'll we're gonna look into the bike rack situation because I hear you. People wanna ride their bikes. Um, does everyone know there's a shower in the basement? So that should go in the announcement as well. So there's a restroom down there with a shower. And sometimes I go in there if I come in early and take a walk on the Charles. So don't be surprised if I'm in there. But there's a shower with a bathroom stall, maybe two bathroom stalls. And I don't know what, what it's like in the men's room, but I assume it's the same thing. Anyone can comment on that? Yes, Sean has his thumb up. So, um, so I just don't want you to freak out if you come in and I'm in a towel blow drying my hair. But... Get your exercise in when you can. And a lot of times I drive in early and go exercise on the Charles. So we're all in this together, trying to stay healthy. And so we'll send that information out because I think there's obviously interest in that from everyone. Yep, another question. I just want to make sure that people on Zoom hear you and they, they'll need the mic. Yeah, of um, course. Thank you. Um, so I appreciate all the updates and these are great. Um, I wanted to raise the point about community building yeah. in um, Friedman and tying that to sort of the wellness. Um, so like there is a wellness office um, at Posner and they do a lot of wellness activities. Um, so I would encourage that uh, people take part in that, but at the same time, having some sort of more um, community building slash wellness type of activities um, mm -hmm. at Friedman as well, because last time there was a, a, a community service event that took place where we were cleaning the, yes. the wider um, Chinatown area and I was the only one from Friedman. Yes. So I think like it would be nice to have sort of more engagement of that type um, within the Friedman community and also with the community outside. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Thank you for going. I came down to say hello and the organizer said, mm, there's only one person from Friedman. It was very heavy medical and dental. And I know we're all busy, don't get me wrong, but if we spread ourselves across community building events, we'll have more of a presence and we'll get to meet new people. So that's really important. There are people at the university who run community relations. Our host community is Boston Chinatown, Medford Somerville, Grafton, and now at the SMFA, we're over kind of closer to the Northeastern campus, but that's another area of Boston, and we take that very seriously. So cleaning up Chinatown was an important event. There's a lunch tomorrow that is with the community of Chinatown with the new president, so he can meet people. So we do a lot of that, so thank you. We'll make sure to publicize that more, and you know, trust me, I know everyone's busy, so just maybe look at things that come through and say, you know, I can't do it all, but when can I show up? And then we're much stronger if we all spread our time and energy across. Speaking to wellness, you're right. There's wellness programming university-wide. And in the culture survey, please comment if you want more at Friedman. Um, I'm looking to Julia Pell on the back, who is um, working on one of my research studies. We worked together for a long time. And we visited this school in Texas. And what they've done for mental health is built a little Zen den in the school. They can't keep the kids out of there. They go in, they just take a breath. It's really beautiful. There's music. And do we need a Zen Den at the Friedman School? You tell me. <laughs> we can make it happen. Um, but if people need, you know, there is a chapel in the um, hospital. And every hospital has one. So if you did need a timeout, I've been in there a couple of times just when I needed a moment um, at different times in my life when things were hard. It's open. So you can go over there. It's not a religious thing it's a spiritual thing so it's just a very simple chapel but you can go in there anytime so just know that that exists and if you want something at the Friedman school like a little zen den we can think about that um, but that's mental health I think you're also speaking to community service nutrition physical health um, and we are aware that the food offerings in the building are non-existent and that's another thing we're exploring other questions online, Lisa? No, okay. Really good feedback though, thank you. Just keep it coming. 
you know, we can't do everything, but we'll we'll see where there's a groundswell of interest and and really try to be responsive to that. All right. I think we're good. We're going to end a minute early, which is perfect. Thank you all so much for coming. Bye.